Hello, this is a review of the Sony Multipod model VCT MP1. So what you get here, shipped and sold from Amazon, comes in a box like that. Out comes the actual box for the product with your Multipod in it and your versatile carry case, a lens cover, and some instructions. And now the first thing I'll say about this is that this thing is compact, versatile, and very well built. Now. The second thing I'll say is that it works really well if you want a very compact way and a very well built way to offer a mini pod, a monopod, and a tripod that is very flexible and easy to maneuver. Now the drawbacks that we'll immediately mention is if you're a seriously professional photographer that needs to very quickly um, convert this into every which way it can go, um, it's not going to be so easy that you can just flip it from one thing to another instantaneously. Um, this thing is more about being compact and well built so that you can convert it into any form that you want and I'll show you how you do that. I mean it's really easy. I mean, I'm going to get to showing you more details later but it has little ways to screw things around but um, when you get to converting into a mi mini pod you start unscrewing things like this and it starts unscrewing here. Um, but obviously if you are going to be just running around doing photo shoots um, as a seriously professional photographer um, maybe you're not going to want to be unscrewing different things like that but from a home user perspective perspective, somebody who wants the flexibility with a whole, without taking a whole lot of space, I, I am thrilled with this thing here. It has a really versatile carry case that is more about compact the de design than being a really sleek case, but it's really cool that it offers as much flexibility as it is, but otherwise it's, you know, it's a basic strap, but at least the strap can come off so that if you have your own strap you want to put on. This thing converts into, folds out to be a full case or partial case, or you strap this or sling it around your shoulder, put the monopod end in here and you can carry it around from that perspective. There's a lot of flexibility there. And now it comes with two identical sets of instructions. The first time you see these, you're going to be like, you're going to wonder what the heck the difference is. And basically, um, this is the one that has the English in it, um, along with other languages. And this one has a whole bunch of other languages. Now you don't really need to even look at the instructions, but I recommend giving them a look through. Now they're not the most convenient instructions to read out there, uh, but just basically give a look over all of the pictorial diagrams. And honestly, just from the pictures alone, it'll be enough to figure out what you can do, but it's going to be pretty self-explanatory but then you go all the way over here and this is where you find your your English section over here if you're an English language speaker as you're skipping over the other languages so it's a little awkward to go from the diagram over here to scan around and find the right section over here now let's look at the main attraction before we look at other things like the bag that you can stick it in so this is the main unit that has everything all currently collapsed together and I can put it on a kitchen scale so you can kind of get the gist that it's about two pounds two ounces um, on a kitchen scale. So it's really nice and light, but it packs a lot of functionality. Now let's quickly look at its features from top to bottom. So we start off at the top, um, you have a quick release lever, this little pad comes out that you can screw into your camera separately and pop it in, pop it out. You have a nut here to, to easily turn to be able to swivel this whole thing. This whole top piece up from my thumb above unscrews at that point. Moving down here, the shaft feels fairly good in your hand. It's got a little bit of heft, so it does not feel cheap, but it is fairly light as seen on the scale. It has a soft, spongy material. You felt this kind of material before. It doesn't seem cheap, um, but it uh, gives you some grip. Um, slide down to here. These um, three rings all expand out. Um, from my finger here below, it expands. From my finger here below, it expands. From my finger, finger here below, it expands. So basically, you can grab each one of these um, and you're going to be able to extend this out um, in cylindrical sections. From down here, um, at this is the point here, from above my thumb, is where you can unscrew this whole uh, mini, mini pod. And um, of course, down here on the legs, you have um, the legs can extend out. It has little easy locking clips that I'll show you a bit later that help you um, lock it into place. And um, down here, of course, these extend out. And these are nice rubber ends that we have on here. And here is the true monopod um, down on the bottom here. Let's look at it first in tripod mode. So basically the first thing to setting up a tripod is to setting the feet. And I thought this was really interesting. So by default it extends out only that far, um, but it's really easy to collapse these and pull them out. But here's, here's the deal is um, when you're going to really, really set up a tripod, you know, that's not your, you know, this isn't sturdy enough, right? That's more your monopod mode. So here's what you do. Um, this is where it gets really configurable. Is number 
number one is it down here, do you see these little tabs right here? You flip this over. By flipping that over, it lets me extend out the leg all the way. Now, it can lock into place automatically, or I can automatically let it click if as I push it back, I'm pushing it down. See how it clicks to another level? So now it is at a different level. So it's really easy to set them all out at a distance. On top of that, as you're doing it, um, when you want greater leg length, you just easily turn by the thumb and you can extend out from the legs. So just set them all to the desired length, give them a quick turn to tighten, and you can obviously put them at half height if you wanted to, or um, just pop them out to full length. So example, this is the most sturdiest mode um, in which you have actually four feet on the ground. Um, you also have the center post in there, which is another one of these rubber feet, um, and these extended out. Don't step on these, because remember these are cylindrical hollow tubes, and then if you step on this, you're going to bend it and you're not gonna be able to push them back in. And another example, this time with it locked into the middle setting, or this time with shorter feet, I have shortened the extensions on this. Obviously it gets more tippy in this environment, you're gonna want your hand on top of it. And another example, tip here yet of course, but if you just wanna set it down and hang on. Now again, I can't stress enough how easy it is to configure, at least in different tripod modes. As I flip it down, remember again, there's this tab here that we see there, just as you see it click into place. So it's really easy to collapse down if you need to quickly move and then set it back up again. I like that it has two positions it can lock into place. And now to adjust the height, there are four extension points that based around these three rings that we have here. So there's gonna be one extension here, one here, one here, and one here. All you do is gently take hold, hold around one and then twist, and then you can slide up any one of these sections um, that we see here. So for example, I'm gonna grab here, twist there, and I can start extending. And I can do that at each one of these levels, and I'll show you the full height in a moment. This is hardly the full height. All right, and now fully extended, we can see the whole height of it here relative to my table. Now I'm about 5'10", and so this is pretty much about eye level, maybe stoop down just about an inch. Now it is a little bit more tippy when you have it fully extended. Um, it's really not too bad, but if you're gonna have people brushing by it, then it might be a concern. But it's a fairly small footprint. Remember again, don't step on it. Now next, you can easily adjust this top where you're gonna attach your camera by ro rotate that down, and you can rotate this guy every which way that you like. Then once you're settled, you can tighten it up. So obviously once you put your camera on here, it's gonna be easier to point it at the right direction. And now this is the, my, one of my favorite parts. This is about the quick release lever here. So you pull this back, and rather than having to affix your camera directly to it, once you quickly release that, you get this little piece to just easily screw into the bottom of the camera. And you can even use a little screw with your hand here so you don't have to even spin the whole, whole disc around. Now it has a good rubber bottom here. So this is a real non-slip piece of rubber that we have here. So when you get to your final tightening, you're definitely gonna use this little screw. So find the matching hole on the bottom of your existing camera. Go ahead and screw it in. And now when you go to pop it in with your camera on, of course, it goes in either direction and just push it in and it automatically locks into place. There we are, it easily popped on. As you can see, it's, it's on there. It's very secure on there. Um, use the knob again to be able to tilt it around and tighten it back into place. And if you ever need to take the camera off to quickly go shoot something by hand, pull the lever and voila, it comes right on off and easily goes back on. Next, let's look at it as a monopod. Now it's basically the exact same thing. You can see the whole rod here. It's just that you can remove the legs and connect it from here to right there. So basically all you have to do is remove this bottom piece like so, and then remove the extra, the leg that you have on here. And now affix that little thing to the bottom here, and voila, you have yourself a monopod. And the whole point of this is if you're just running around and wanna take the weight off of your arms, sometimes it'd be nice just to be able to set it down, but obviously it's gonna tilt any which way, but it takes the weight off your arms. So that's a monopod. And the legs easily go back on. Put the fourth leg back on. And of course, you could always just have ratcheted down the legs and it makes a little slightly wider monopod. Now let's let make a mini pod. So basically all we have to do is connect this top piece, remove the whole middle section and connect the bottom to it. So remove the bottom again, the legs, like so, and remove the top by spinning as such, like so, and then attach it to the top of the legs. Screw it down again, as tight as you prefer. And now you have the exact same thing, just without the shaft in between. Now I really like this because it's a pretty darn sturdy little mini pod if you want. You still have all of the leg configuration extensions and um, that you can do and the nice tilting head and removable head. And I can still remove it like that, take it around, carry it around and come on back, slide it back on in, pop it in and it's back in place. Thanks for watching the review.